Hello and welcome to Dudley Zoo and Castle where you join me here at our Macaw Avery. Now macaws are part of the parrot family. They are the largest group of parrots in, in the world and they all come from Central to South America. Now on site we actually have three different species of macaw. We've got our scarlet macaws that you can see just behind me here. We have our military macaws, which you might see in shot. They're the greener and green ones with red shoulders. And we also have our blue and gold macaw that lives up in the Discovery Center, which is a firm favorite of many of our guests called Charlie. Now, macaws are highly sociable animals. They actually can live in flocks of anything from 10 to up to 100 animals. Now, being so highly sociable, they have to be extremely clever. They are very smart animals and they have really great communication skills. Now, these communication skills vary from their ability to talk to each other, uh, their ability to market their territory, and also when they are in these large flocks, they can actually identify each other through their calls, which means they're very, very clever animals indeed. Now, as you'll notice behind me, they are extremely brightly coloured, which you might think would make them stand out. But where they live, up in the canopies of the rainforest, there are lots of brightly coloured fruit and flowers that they blend in with really nicely. But the fruit isn't just for camouflage. The fruit is actually one of their favourite food. Um, they'll eat fruit, nuts and seeds. However, this sort of diet can be quite high in toxins and quite harsh on the indigestion system. So they also have to go to places called clay licks. Now, clay licks are these barren sides of riverbanks, uh, which are high in minerals. And you'll often see huge flocks of macaws there, and they'll be licking and eating the soil. Now, this can actually be for two reasons. It helps neutralize those toxins in their stomach, but also it's really high in such minerals as sodium, which are really hard to find anywhere else in the rainforest. Now, you'll notice they're really well adapted to eat fruits and nuts and things like that because of these really powerful beaks. And also, they've got these wonderful talons, uh, which they can actually hold and inspect uh, food with. Now, unfortunately, they are having a very dire time of it at the moment. According to the IUCN Red List, there are 17 different species of macaw that still are in existence in the wild. There is an 18th member of that family, which is now actually extinct in the wild, but can only be found in captivity. This is called the Spix's macaw, and it's relying on zoos to actually help breed them and potentially release them back into the wild. Now, the reason these animals are having a really difficult time out in the wild isn't just because of the destruction of their habitat, like many other animals, but also they're targeted quite a lot for the pet trade. Being so bright and coloured, being highly sociable and intelligent, they're really sought after and people absolutely love them as a prized possession. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the times these are not suitable pets for most people. They can actually, believe it or not, live on average between 60 to 80 years of age. So if you are going to plan on having one as a pet, you haven't just got to think about looking after it yourself, but a lot of the time they will outlive their owners. So you've got to make sure there's a plan for afterwards as well. Here at the zoo, we do everything we can to support the conservation of these animals. And we've actually raised quite a lot of money for the World Parrot Trust, where we have collaborated with them of the release of hundreds of parrots out in Costa Rica. Uh, and they're all scarlet macaws, just like the ones we've got behind us here. Now, I can't leave you without my three fun facts. Now, fact number one, these animals were actually mate for life. Um, not only for breeding purposes, uh, but when they reach maturity around three years old, they'll partner up uh, like I say, for breeding, but also they'll preen each other, they'll share food with each other, they'll care for young together, and they can also be, be seen flying together as close as this, um, which is a really beautiful thing and really shows how sociable and intelligent these animals actually are. Fact number two about these incredible animals is actually studies have proven that they've got their own names. Uh, basically, a parrot will be given a sound or a call and every single time that parrot needs to be involved in the flock, all of the rest of the animals will actually use that call to identify that animal, just like having a name. Now, number fact number three, and if you are to believe this story, because there are many people that say it's just speculation, the oldest parrot ever to exist was called Charlie, just like our blue and gold macaw up at the DC, and it is a blue and gold macaw, and it was apparently said to be owned by Winston Churchill, and has lived past 114 years old. 
So like I say, if you are looking at ever having one of these guys, you've really got to think about the, their future and make sure they're as occupied as possible. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed the talk today and we're very excited that, fingers crossed, we'll see you all here on the 12th of April.